Uh, the point is that you have to work. And that's why, that's why the propaganda system is so successful. Uh, very few people are going to have the time or the energy or the commitment to carry out the constant battle that's required to get outside of, uh, you know, McNeil there or, or you know, Dan Rather or somebody like that. The easy thing to do, you know, you come home from work, you're tired, you've had a busy day, you know, you're not going to spend the evening carrying out a research project. So you turn on the tube, you say it's probably right. Or you look at the headlines in the paper and then you watch the sports or something. Because uh, and, and that's, that's basically the way the system of indoctrination works. Sure, the other stuff is there, but you're going to have to work to find it. Modern industrial civilization has developed within a certain system of convenient myths. The driving force of modern industrial civilization has been individual material gain, which is accepted as legitimate, uh, even praiseworthy, on the grounds that uh, private vices yield public benefits in the classic formulation. Now, it's long been understood very well that a society is, that is based on this principle will destroy itself in time. It can only persist with whatever suffering and injustice it entails as long as it's possible to pretend uh, that the destructive forces that humans create are limited uh, that the world is an infinite resource and that the world is an infinite garbage can. At this stage of history, either one of two things is possible. Either the general population will take control of its own destiny and will concern itself with community interests guided by values of solidarity and sympathy and concern for others, or alternatively, there will be no destiny for anyone to control. As long as some specialized class is in a position of authority, it is going to set policy in the special interests that it serves. But the conditions of survival, let alone justice, require rational social planning in the interests of the community as a whole, and by now that means the global community. The question is whether privileged elites should dominate mass communication and should use this power as they tell us they must, namely to impose necessary illusions, to manipulate and deceive the stupid majority and remove them from the public arena. The question in brief is whether democracy and freedom are values to be preserved or threats to be avoided. In this possibly terminal phase of human existence, Democracy and freedom are more than values to be treasured. They may well be essential to survival. Thank you. He's up there thinking for himself, and he's deciphering this tremendously overweighted body of information, which he puts into an order and gives you the feeling that you can do the same thing, that the whole thing is decipherable. And he also gives you the sense that there is a source, there's a center to the um, to a dissenting population, although we feel that there's no center. And I think that is what re reactivated in me um, a desire to get back, get reacquainted with the political scene after 30 years of alienation from it.